All right, good morning, everybody. Um, returning to the Copeblade deck, deck that I think has been kind of teeming with potential. We tried a few different versions at this point. Um, I, I ended up liking this build better than the Snapcaster Flame of Anor version. I thought that that build, like Snapcaster Flame of Anor, raises the mana curve and like Cryptic Code just gives you such an incredible degree of inevitability. Uh, in the late game that I just think you want to try to get that curve lower, which is why now we're playing 6-1 mana removal spells, 3 else, 3 prismatic ending, we're playing 2 spell pierces the main, we're down a tide binder from the main deck, we're down a couple subtleties from the main deck. I've also I've also trimmed in the Femorate. I I've been kind of unhappy to draw two copies of that card early and, you know, I like to see if likes to say sometimes, you know, if you you really don't want to draw two copies of a card early, you probably should just have three copies in the deck. Um also, pretty happy cutting all of the copies of Lorid Revealed. Uh, just because you so consistently have a code in play, you just have that mana sink. Uh, I find I found that casting Lorid Revealed to draw three was just not coming up almost ever. And so uh, we're up to three of the Surveil Lands instead, which I am, have just been so impressed by the Surveil Lands. Uh, also, splashing for Pick Your Poison in the sideboard. I think... I can't remember if we did this in this build last time. But I think Pick Your Poison is, like, not only a new card I want to be casting a lot of, but it's also, I think, particularly well-positioned to try to combat the Scion of Draco deck. Uh, the, the deck that's just, you know, it, the fact that it can just kill Scion of Draco, in addition to Urza Saga, in addition to the One Ring, in addition to Murktide Region, in addition to Amulet of Vigor, just, just does so much. Just thinking out loud. So I'm going to draw against Hammer. Oh, we still need to play the Hammer Coat deck, too. I've not done that yet. I'm unlikely to want to tap out for Stone Force. I mean, I would I prefer to have, like, Counter Magic up with the Logic Nod. I prefer to. Although it's only, you know, days. I'm going to bottom both. Four real spells. Nice, although I may have to period in for... That's why it's uh, tough, tough part of keeping this kind of hand on the draw. Hoping they don't have a hammer. Reasonable. I think I'm going to try to preordain into untapped white and prismatic ending the cigar to Zaid. Or maybe I should maybe I should get rid of the sentinel. This way, if they have a hammer, I could just take 11. Then I can oust the giver. Or I guess I could oust the sentinel. Save the pending, because pending's a bit more premium. And then I can go pending with counter with, with logic not up. I think that's a bit better. I think Amatite is one of those decks that will always be present some order, sort of like Tron and Burn. Sort of like Tron and Burn, except it is broken. A broken deck that <laughs> is insanely high skill ceiling and the ability to play through like any amount of hate. Why else? Else is just very good. At, don't need to overthink it too much. All right, the plan of taking eleven online. It just, it just, there's a, if there's a creature in play, blip, it's not there anymore. Blip. How time is it again? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know if it actually did super well, but time just so. so. Figure out that they should play around counter spell by animating Nexus, activating Stoneforge probably. My blue blue mana up and my no solitude last turn. It takes some time to figure it out. Oh, but they just have Cauldron in their hand. Something Something went awry. Numberalize counter plus one. Minus one, right? Oh, better than oh, sorry, better than better than more lights going on. Tide binder, maybe? I didn't have tide binder up. I only had two mana up. So their hand right now is uh, hammer. S for sentinel. So I gotta hold up the tide binder. You want to put something into play this time? 
Ah, so they have Cauldra. So I need to... I guess see if this resolves. Then Tide Binding the Living Weapon. Did they shuffle? Oh, they Stoneforge shuffled away the... Away the Esper Sentinel, I see. The last card is a hammer. I think we have to go to Fairy plus one here. They have two ways to equip. Oh, wait, hold on. But they have the second hammer just in play. I guess we're kind of boned. Unless I may... <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Was there was there a better line? Was there like bounce paladin try to draw solitude? Why do people not like Gauss? This just says get rid of your opponent's creature. Make them draw a bad card in two turns usually. Yeah, I guess we had to draw a bounce paladin. Maybe they maybe they, you know, fuck up again. They don't like it's because of sorcery? But they like, but they love prismatic ending. Maybe they don't love prismatic ending. They have lethal on board. I know they have lethal on board. <laughs> but it's already messed up, you know. Once let's let the makeup mess up again. Actually, they don't have lethal on board though. Can I just block one? The hammer response. Why do I do that? Dude, they drew another hammer. Okay, that's lethal. For sure. Can't mess this up. My soul sex out hammer response for cast. Give, I, give me a reason why I would do that. I can't think of a reason why that would be a good play. What's the point? Just to give them the perfect information that I'm tapped out. They can't equip both. They can equip both. They can animate Ink Moth Nexus and still have three artifacts. But three to fairies. No subtlety. Counter spell. Not doctor, one year, happy anniversary. Think of no more lies. I I'm not like excited about no more lies. It's there. There's a chatter earlier said that it was a combination man, or they said it was mana leak and half a swords to plowshares, which was one of the most nonsensical comparisons I've ever heard because it exiles the spell. It's it's half a swords to plowshares. Uh, <laughs> the bad half, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's, I'm not excited about it. it. It's a card you can play if you like it. It's, it could be, could be fine. Um, I'm not, I'm not super amped or anything though. Logic Nons counter spells more five. Yeah, I, I, I want like five two mana counter spells in most of my decks right now. Logic Nons pretty good for the counter spell. Is it like it's just solitude? Yeah, pitching to solitude is like kind of why you want it. Um, I've played a lot of mana leaks in my life and boy... There's, there's three mana not get the spell a lot of time, but maybe it's, I think it's probably pretty good in the current environment. Things are pretty fast. I I don't I don't dislike it. I don't feel very strong though. It's half a swords because it pitches a solitude. Oh, I see. Okay, still unhinged comparison, <laughs> but I thought you meant because of the exile. <laughs> That's even because of the exile mode. That makes a little bit more sense, I guess. You want to get breeding pool turn one, so you can get tap surveil in next two and still cast uh, pick your poison on turn two here. Ending. But yeah, I don't know. It, it, either way, it's like it's a mana leak that pitches to swords. I think I think that the exile mode on the card could be more relevant than it is. It doesn't see, feel like it's a, a particularly relevant at the moment in our current modern environment. Esper Cryptico with Cottage Big Top card. It's kind of a deck in standard with Cottage. Cottage isn't standard legal, is it? Uh, we 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 talked about it some. I'm kind of like not that into cottage at the moment because there, I maybe there's less blood moons now, but there have been a lot of blood moons. But maybe we should have the cottage package and like the Esper Ephemerate Persist build. I can see that being good. Only relevant against Jogger and Cottage now. Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree that the Exile is not super relevant. Like it, it, anything is like super duper incidental, but it, it can be more relevant if the meta game changes, of course. 
Displaced ginger brute. Oh, yeah, asked Barbara for Reduke. Yeah, I'm trying to get. Lo I, I'm just kind of passing Reduke on my way down here. <laughs> uh, interesting draw. I guess let's just make them sack a enchantment and then keep salty to fit right up. I do like the Reduke hair stuff. I want to. I want to. I want to get a little bit longer and then kind of figure out like. Uh, exactly how I want it. Maybe I want to maybe get the Kibler, super long hair. What do you think of Doppelgang as top end and Green Devotion as Pioneer? Like, uh, I, I don't I don't know what card that is. If you could type exclamation point card and the full name of the card, I'd I'll read it with you. Yeah, I think Man Bun could be good. So I haven't been playing it. It's just like when there's when there's like a new good set in modern to brew with, I can't really focus on anything else. But I, I will return to Timeless probably next week. Uh, if there's like a tournament, I'll play it. I I, I want to brew in Timeless also. Like I have a I have an interest in doing it still. But uh, modern is just very juicy at the moment. And when, when modern when modern's juicy, I really like just I don't want to focus on anything else. And it's it's best for me to focus on modern. Um, I think I'm getting coat. The left is just pretty high. Yeah, I hear, I hear I hear reports that Show and Tell is quite good. I was expecting it to be solid, maybe not maybe not that good. Um, uh, I'm hearing reports. I kind of want to find out for myself though. You know what I mean? Pick your poison is awesome for Gold Breach. I believe that. Yeah. I really want to play Breach with, like, no Ragabans. That's something I've been wanting to do lately. I can play Breach with Phantasm. That actually sounds kind of sick. Wait, Phantasm is sick in Breach. I got, that's going on the sticky note. I got so many things on the note. Although I gotta... erase some stuff, actually. I, I've been manatized enough times to chill here. I also get to rep interaction. Which Phantasm? So yeah, I guess nobody tuned in yesterday. Um, hold on, let me open the box field. Stop on Phantasm. It, it, the card was very good yesterday. Wait, isn't it isn't it just better to play like Breach over Murktide in this kind of shell? Because then you get to go crazy when you have Breach, Channel, or Phantasm. Your Phantasm's just like infinite power. Phantasm was already like really big yesterday. I don't know if you also want to play like the combo or if you just want to play like. Breach over Murktide, or like, like three Shredder, three Breach, maybe. I think that could be really good. And then it's like you have the beef with the Phantasm too. It's a thought about Phantasm. It's a one mana two two. Whenever you surveil, you put a plus one counter on it. You get surveils from your surveil lands, your channelers, and your considers. Okay, and print a prismatic ending. If we drew a land. We could pick up a coat and replay. We just pick up the coat end of turn. Loam, Breach, Goblin, and Archimancer, Manamorphos goes infinite. Loam, Breach, an Archimancer, Manamorphos goes infinite. One mana cast a Loam, one mana cast the. Yeah. Sounds like it goes infinite. Ding. Oh, it's not so nice to have the ability to put code into play. With our counter spell up. Thank you, Marv. This Easter Trust content is now surveil. Uh, I, I have heard rumors. Um, I'm still hurt by all the things which Trust content has done to me. But yeah, we, we'll, we'll play some of that too, I think. I think I think that the Breach makes a lot of sense there. Not that Murktide's is a pretty good card at the moment, but Phantasm seems like it'll go crazy. Uh, okay, game three. I want to bring in, like, one Needle, actually. I don't usually like to play two against Hammer. Yeah, yeah, they, they ratted a lot of cards to say Surveil. I guess that's because of this set, or... I don't know why exactly. But yeah, I don't know, Search for his content is, is very... It's mid-minus. Power level low, unfortunately. 
Not, not the worst card I've ever registered. Yeah, we went 3-2 with the Phantasm deck yesterday into an 0-2, so it wasn't, like, super, super impressive. But the, the, the Phantasm card, I think, looks pretty good, and I think the Breach variant is probably a little bit better potential. Mr. Fable became Evergreen. I guess that makes sense, yeah. So. Surveil. Definitely keep that. Darling Gorehound 2 Skeletons. Yeah, I think I was the one that tweeted that out for the... F I think I... Uh, I will take full credit for it, but someone, like, showed me the card Mossman Skeleton, and I, like, had been thinking of Gorehound. I'm like, wow, it works for Gorehound. I, I, I tweeted out, and the tweet has got, like, a thousand likes or something. He's, like, more of a pioneer thing. I think, like, a pioneer court of calling shell with those cards could be cool. I haven't really spent the most time trying to figure it out. Hmm... I think it's kind of likely they have a like protection spell. Oh, they got a, they got a, they got a pure steel pally over there probably. I think I should likely prismatic ending and pay this turn. Seems like on the sentinels seems pretty safe since unlikely that they're gonna have the uh, the metal craft for paladin next turn. And then I get two explosives without giving them a card. Also have Solitude Ephemerate. Whale of Grounds also main deck extra to Leyline of the Void and Gorios. Yeah, I I I I I, I like the, the suggestion meet. Um like one thing I've been concerned with is like how many instants and sorceries you have, but maybe we just archaeologist mills so much it's not it's it's good. I'm 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 on board with like the card being strong though. I'll look at it some more. I had I had high hopes for it when we played it in the um And the uh, Archon persist, no persist deck. What about Solitude Ephemerate and Ending the Hammer? I want, you only get two. You only get two three, uh, of the possible three things you could get. I also kind of want to bait the Paladin a little bit and get that out of the hand because I'm assuming they have Paladin if they're just running a hammer out like this. I'm gonna make them second artifact though, and then Stone Forge. Oh, no. I guess we just chomp. Playing their excuse this season? I, I don't know. It's I might play in, like, one. I'm, pl I'm going to Chicago to play in the big standard open. It'll be fun. I haven't selected a deck. That, that event is in, like, less than two weeks. Um... But I just, I just, I just really prefer to stream on the weekends than if I if I'm gonna play Magic on the weekends, I prefer to stream than to like go to a paper tournament in my area. People land here. They need to ban for better tutor cards. What does that mean? What what tutors are you using and what tutor cards are you getting? Also, Yorion is banned in Modern. <laughs> So I I would not recommend I guess I would not recommend trying to play Yorion lest you get DQ'd from your FNM. Another one. Well, I guess if they have protection spell could be could be tough. If it used to be believable. I believe it, I don't know. <laughs> Although I guess I always We'll coat with salty to fim right up. And they, this could give if they, if they have the protection spell. Oh wow, I drew. I hit. I hit salty off the coat. This this is obviously what I was hoping to happen. This this allows me to, um, beat a protection spell. But I, I earlier I was just hoping they could miss time a protection spell. Let's think about timeless. Should have specified. I, I yeah, you should, it should have. But that's okay. Um, I, I, we've been thinking a little bit about playing Stoneforge, Mystic, Cryptocote, Ephemerate, and Brainstorm to be able to, like, put, like, a show into, or uh, Omniscience into play. It doesn't sound like it'd probably be that good, like, three-card combo, you know, but it could be something to look at, I agree. Don't we still lose to the main phase surge? 
Yeah, I guess so. Was there any? Was there anything I could do about that? Oh, Stoneforge is in on arena. I see. Yeah, we probably have to wait till Coat or Stoneforge is on arena, or you could try it. Yeah, Soul Two gets ETB trigger if you ephemerate it into play. It does not get the ETB trigger if you uh, pitch. You got to equip here because I, I I could just kill this end of turn. Should we pitch to be a protection spell? Well, I can still pitch after a protection spell. Why would I pitch before? Either way, it's two salt who's targeting Ink Moth Nexus. But fortunately, they can't equip as instant. Can't they? Yeah, they can. That line on the line on the curb. Yeah, you, you, we lose the main phase surge because they give everything uh, everything hexproof, and I I wouldn't be able to target the Ink Moth because it's not a, a creature. You equip now or after blocks? It is currently after blocks. Blocks are declared in the end of block step. So now. I think we needed depending the hammer instead of Esper is a big thing that he's just shooting. Maybe. Uh, with the, not giving him the card when I explosive, I think was potentially really exciting. But yeah, maybe. This is so sweet. <laughs> My puts is no, I I effed up. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, the game one could make sense to need about him. Yeah, code is so sick. Do a counter spell, so it seems somewhat safe to play Stoneforge grab Cauldra. Bounce the Sendo Turian. If I don't use the counter spell. Shout out to Rabbit Battery, be pretty good here. Yeah, I guess they would need red. Just in general, like a an equipment that's a, a creature has always been kind of interesting. I remember we tried Rabbit Batter and Hammer and then didn't like really draw any conclusions when it came out. I'll, that was also like a, I think I feel like a time when all like the Boros Hammer decks were like obsessed with putting Ragavan in their deck for no reason. Oh, they had the protection spell. They had wait, they had two protection spells? Oh no. Well good luck to them. Esprim. <laughs> yeah, all all uh, all of the South American fans always call me a, a, a aspiring or Esprina. We should get that spell pierce. <clears throat> and then basically basically everyone else calls me Spike. It's weird in CPUs. I, I I asked him to use Everett Mohan for that. I don't know. <laughs> it didn't feel that weird to me. Drew counter spell. Does Merfolk seem well positioned right now? Seems like it could as long as it can push damage fast. Can Merfolk push damage fast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, is Merfolk well positioned? Is is the question, uh, for sure. Um maybe is the answer. <laughs> uh Merfolk is pretty bad against Yogmoth. I think that it is. It has an interesting dynamic against. I 
against rhinos where your hex catcher is really really good against them and you have tide binder that's good against them but if you it it, it is not a, a good thing or and it's it's very easy it's also a very easy thing for you to become behind on board against them I don't know. I I I kind of like Merfolk. What one thing one thing that I've really been struggling with Merfolk is that um I'm of the opinion that I'm of the opinion that um sorry. <laughs> uh Flame of Anor is very good to play at Merfolk. I'm of the opinion that uh Sonote Scout is also a very good card to play at Merfolk. But it's not super clear to me how how big of a downside a team or mana base is, and I also am not very happy with the fact that you have like you have way too many three drops if you want to play Sonote Scout and if you want to play Flame of Anor and if you want to play Sylvoon, which I think you do want to play all like four of all those cards. I'm not sure. But maybe just be mono blue or blue green. I like a tide binder off the Voidwalker. Oust! Somehow five cards in the yard despite having Voidwalker XL4 of them. Like four flame is a bit much, maybe two main board, two sideboard at most. I've main decked four flame before. Flame is like really freaking good card. You know. Flame is flame rules. That card is great. Like basically every creature is a merfolk. But I, I I agree it's a lot because more so for me because of the mana curve you know. You value scout over flame. I don't know like scout's a one drop. Scout's like the best one drop you could play too. But it's also green and you're like mono blue deck. The scout is really good I think. Well, we've been baited. They did keep the borrower on top too. His borrower mystery card. That would be good. Stoneforge would be good. Fairy would be good. Thankfully, we have a third. Um, Veil land. Praise is making Stepcaster playable makes me sad. Dude, Stepcaster is currently so good in modern. It's like, it's better than it's been in like three years, four years. Like, Stepcaster is like, just, just, it's just, it's just, it's just good. It's good again. Uh, just be, be thankful. You think, like, look, look at your Tarmogoy brothers and your Liliana sisters and reflect on that could have been you. That could have been you where you, with your pet card completely unplayable. But they, they printed Flame of a Norm. And thankfully, they didn't listen to my feedback that maybe maybe you should deal three damage instead of five or four damage instead of five. Hope for blood said let us feel the Snapcaster just guy deck again. Yeah, maybe maybe. I mean I obviously those are kind of my pet decks, you know. Have been for a while. It's not logic, not this. Very in play. I get breeding pool end of turn. For prismatic ending, obviously the one life is a cost. Yeah, I've 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 played the team or Merfolk deck before, but for for me like the biggest issue is honestly the 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 mana curve is is wonky. We need to top deck another solitude, and then be, I guess not dead on board to a fairy actually. We're gonna go stone forge for coding, but but then they just went with the fairy. I guess they would have to like minus it. Let's go to game two.
well played opponent. Tiger, 23 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Was really not thinking about the undying effect on the Voidwalker that game. I think I'm going to cut my Tide Binders. They have some applications, of course. I'm going to bring in two Scoldings. Third Pierce. One subtlety. One subtlety feels like an okay number. Really like ousted this matchup. Oust is awesome. You know the good vile decks other than Merfolk. We're still working on goblins. Having having a very hard time with it. Um, Merfolk is probably the best one though. I guess we we played uh, Amalia with Aether Vile. For a while, but then I ended, I ended up cutting the vials from the deck and being really happy because that, that's a deck that like really does get into top deck battles super often. And also like, what's nice is like your cheap like one mana creatures are oftentimes good top decks because they like surveil, they like trigger life gain to like trigger Malia to explore. Like like so many spots are just in a spot where like any creature is uh any creature is a good top deck. Hey, play shift. I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well too. In Tiger. I know Asmo isn't unpopular. Do you think it's underplayed? The Titan Rhinos matchup really ain't that bad. The new the new four color Rhinos is worse versus Asmo without Flame. Yeah, I think the NT Asmo decks are good. You know, they've done well on some challenges. I think I think there's not a big community consensus on how to build the archetype, and I think that's that's good for like the prospect of the deck. Um there's a new set where it didn't really get anything, um, but um it it would be a deck I'd still be interested in playing. Okay, let's hold up Scolding on turn one against the Grief Scam deck. And so the mold is six. Wrong discard spell. Swear Pro Black seems better than Cauldre if they play Bar and Black Removal. Dude, Cauldre is so. Cauldre is like literally unbeatable <laughs> against them. But like the the thing about swords is they're just they're, swords are bad against black removal spells because they just kill the shit in response to the equip. What are we equipping? Our dead stone forge mystic. Let's use Voya. Yeah, I've been I've been wanting to. I just love elves so much. I I want to try to play Voya in Pioneer Elves soon. The man is a lot worse though, unfortunately. I think I am supposed to get a uh, coat here just because the Stone Forge is so lucky to die. Make it a real two for one. Fans are working playing against walls, playing in challenging in 6 3. Did you make any changes? Uh, I'm, I'm open to playing walls again, of course. Um, kind of a pet deck of mine. I, th I think the Pride is a, like, a really, really exciting card for the archetype, too. I was just holding this. Because they know about the scolding, so it's like like maybe they're trying to bait me for group scam or something. But it's just it's it's just tough for like these known one mana counter spells to be super duper good. And just this is a clean enough exchange, and I don't really care that much if this dies either at this point. Feels like if they're taking this long, they do have grief scam, so that that would be bad. Conspiracy theories. It's like something when you discard a card, a one or hey, pull pull up the card. I'll, I'll take a look. They don't have Voidwalker Groove Scam, do they? Okay, they have Voidwalker Dismember. That is fine. But they're thinking about not dismembering. They dismember. Two cards in their hand. Yeah, let's just let's let's oust. Let's keep counterspell, pierce up this turn. Surveil in the turn, probably. Oh yeah, assemble the players. That's all my sticky note. That that was an interesting tool for walls. Why did Scam decks take out Malachar Birth? Card is both a land and Scam. I mean, it 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 is also just the plus one counter matters so much, you know. Last card's a Death Shadow. Very interesting last card. Kind of tough for them to play around this subtlety, to be honest. Maybe it's a little telegraphed. They know one of my cards is code, so they know I thought about casting the code and decided not to. But they would know that, I guess, if I tapped the mana or didn't untapped it anyways.
Altitude underneath here, too. Four power on blockable life lick is kind of nice. Do you have anything already under avoid counter? I have a Stoneforge of a stick under avoid counter, not the most relevant. Two cores in the bottom of Preordain. Oh, Conspiracy and Ravel. Yeah, that card costs seven mana. I don't know. I'm not that excited about it. It's very cool, though. Is Conspiracy Theorist a different card? I think it is. Uh, so, Engineered Explosives, and I believe Hidden Sugi would also, does kill the, the, the Cloaks. I believe that's how it's supposed to work. We had, like, a long conversation about it the other day. Um... Entirely sure. But a magical line that is how it works. I, be I believe that's. Yeah, I didn't even realize you could flip the cards, but I mean, it's not the most relevant part of the text. It is very. It was very funny though. <laughs> this is about, even better than I thought it was. So it's a mold of six on the on the play with the thought seize. Roll land, hopefully it can surveil into a spell, you know how it goes. I guess I should be able to fetch a response to a void walker. Alist is really good against them. I'm gonna just keep it. I think this card's great in the matchup. They're Merc Tides and Void Walkers and Shadows. I'm gonna just cast this. All this, just a clean two-for-one. This is the biggest thing. Stoneforge Mystic used to not be this. You would get, like, Batter Skull or Sword at this spot, and they would kill it, and your Batter Skull and Sword were, like, barely cards. Co code is, like, a, like a relevant card for next turns. Awesome. Clean two-for-one. I guess opponent mold in the play. Any collect evidence cards and Capricious Hellraiser designs? Um... I haven't been thinking much. I think those two have some tension there. The, the problem with Hellraiser, and that may, maybe this is why Hellraiser gets kind of lost in the sauce. I don't know. Let's let's maybe hold up Counterspell. This don't want to get stubbed. Um, not that they necessarily play that card. Like the 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 problem with Hellraiser is not that you're not getting to cast your like omniscience or your Seagate Restoration when you when you play it. Like Hellraiser is really good when it's three mana and you get to cast stuff from the yard. The problem isn't sculpting your graveyard. The problem is getting nine cards in your graveyard. That being said, the Surveil lands are like pretty significant upgrades to Capricious Hellraiser and. I know I juiced the card a lot in the past. I am I'm optimistic that the Surveil lands. Uh, Make it a bit better. I mean, it's obvious. It's obvious. They're obviously making it a bit better, right? Where to put that one back? The problem with Hellraiser is the text of the number of the cards. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess. But people, people seem to think the issue is like. You're not casting your biggest spell with it. But, like, any, anytime you cast a 3-mana 4-4 four, four flyer and you cast any spell from the yard, it's, like, pretty sick play. I'll raise her with Reenact the Crime. Not sure exactly, like, what the plan is with that, you know? There's just kind of two cards that have Graveyard Synergy. I got too many else to use the counter spell in this. Yeah, we, we did play Lauren Revealed and Hell. Lauren Revealed is also very good with Hellraiser. We played it in. Um, I believe we just played it in. Right, this one cast a coat. In like a creativity deck where Hellraiser was our creativity target. Which I think. I think at the. Oh, they had stuff. Oh, fuck. Um, it's okay, we're still super ahead. Yes. We played in a creativity shell, which I think made a lot of sense. Where you you want to be like all red mana base for Dwarven Mine. Hellraiser is like an all red card. It just like there's like a lot of like nice overlap there. And it was nice that you never had like any like dead draws like Archon. Like Hellraiser is like really really castable that deck, but you also like have like worse like inevitability of course. Lilac self one charger? What what is that card? What are you what are you trying to reference there? Opponent probably has like fatal push in the spot and they're like uh 
I'm trying to like think. I, I mean, I, I, I if I cast this fatal push, I lose the game. But if, if I don't cast the fatal push, I I don't use any mana. Seems to likely be the thought process, and I do not envy. This Cryptico True Name is home. I, I un unironically think the card is better than True Name Nemesis would be in the stack. I know they're getting to use their push here, but we just like get to bounce the coat, replay it. Hooterable off Stoneforge Mystic, obviously. Also, has been really good for me lately. I think it's just a very good removal spell in this like Scion of Draco, Murktide Regent, Yogmoth format. I think I want to oust that again. So I'll probably bounce coat, then go oust. Coat oh, counterspell up if I draw land. Oh, Stoneforge counterspell up seems pretty good. Cards there, him. Because when do you take the card to your head? Just a fairy to go card. Yes. Yeah, it's like it's just basically sorcery speed, sword supply shares. That decks that decks hell is an under, unplayable card. Like, why, why does Path look fine at this meta? Like, why? Why do you want? Why do you? Why? Why are modern players obsessed with Path to Exile? I just don't understand this phenomenon. Are y'all not all just miserable casting that card? I know I was always miserable. Oh, they have Dismember. Wow. I was always miserable, miserable, miserable. Let's let's play around another stuff. Playing Path to Exile. Have you ever like had a scalding tarn in your opening hand? And you're on the draw against Burn, and your opponent goes, Goblin Guide, attack you for two. And then you go, Fetch, Shock, Hound Fountain, Path to Exile, the Goblin Guide. I, I, I never once enjoyed casting Path to Exile, and I'm happy it's, I'm happy it's unplayable. Nobody's playing Burn? I know, but it's like, I'm, I'm talking, that's, 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 that's that was, that, this is the era y'all are nostalgic for. This is the removal spell y'all are nostalgic for. Why? For Path Exile, a Ragavan, the Nimble Pilferer? Why? Why do you want to do this? Is that what else does? No, else doesn't give them the land, though. Else doesn't give them the, it gives them a land. I agree, chat. The, the Exile target creature part, I love that part of Path to Exile. I love that part. Give them a land into play in a format where everybody has infinite mana sinks and lore and reveals and like you always have like <laughs> you almost always just have <laughs> enough stuff to do with all of your mana. Yeah, I know. It's just I just don't know why people are nostalgic for it. I just I'm so glad I never have to cast that card again. Bounce called you could bounce called you. The problem is there's a bowmaster in play, so I feel like I just want to hold up the uh uh winning interaction and then and bounce the cauldron. You're going to trade 88 Murktide for basic land? I would rather oust an 88 Murktide. <laughs> I'd rather Solitude Leyline Binding. It's, I'm saying you don't have to play Pat. Come on. I guess, but. There are, there are many better ways to deal with the Murktide. Like, like say, say something about the metagame that makes. Path good, besides it looks good in the meta game, you know. That makes it better than like Al's. But I, it's just like, listen, you just don't give your opponent, just don't give your opponent's lands in modern. Do not do that. Listen, every blue white player has this like, has this dialogue tree of like path to exile madness. I've seen it so many times over the years. It's it's seemingly uncurable disease, where. For some reason, your ley light, your like ley light bindings keep getting disenchanted. Your solitudes are, you're like, I'm two for winning myself with solitude. I'd rather two for one myself with path to exile. Basic land is not as good as a card, you know. And it's like you have like this path to exile dialogue tree in your head where you just convince yourself it's good, and you convince yourself people aren't playing basics when every deck is playing a bunch of basics, you know. <laughs> you just 
You just have this crazy dialogue tree. Just del just delete it from your brain, I think. Delete this card. And be happy you don't have to cast it. Path Assess, Tribute Sage. Maybe Besiege is good, but mostly because it's like so free. Yeah, playing against Coffers. The preordained first. Get underneath the bowmasters. Don't feel super like I need to hold up uh Bell Pierce right now. A okay, suspended so profane tutor. Well I got a Teferi the fun raveler to ravel that fun. Plus because I don't have the ping with bowmasters. If Path was a land, would I play it? Yeah, I would, I would play Fort. If Path of Exile was a Besaju, where you could play it as like a Plains or Channel, I'd play Fort like every deck. <laughs> oh no, Shieldred's Edict. Huh. I guess we get to Tidebind of the Profane Tutor at least. They play around Bowmasters better than playing around Edict. You want to you want a Tidebinder the the trigger with with a Magic Online when there's no counters on it and there's a trigger on the stack. Land ring would be bad. They got a land. In the beginning of combat phase, they're going to cycle stone. Good draw. I'm kind of tempted to just put uh, whatever card I see on top with them having double field here. That was like at least good enough to do that. Just get to bait the field activation so hard there. Is Memory Deluge getting more? Uh, we played some Wilderness Reclamation decks. Where I, I still do really like Memory Deluge. I think it's better than the ring in that deck by a lot. What likes to cast it? Well, this is the second time this game my opponent has cycled at the beginning of combat step. No coffers. I mean, they have Profane Tutor and Herborg. They're definitely playing coffers. But F Field is super stock in coffers also. Yeah, per game. If you play Bowmaster with the other counter to Bowmaster, you counter other Bowmasters, not because the ability is all that relevant. No books that should be gog. I mean, is there any deck that's actually doing that? Playing Bowmaster to counter Bowmaster? Maybe there are. I can I can see Al Spat against Coffers. Not gonna bring in sort of feast and famine. But pick your poison. I don't want to. I don't want to bring in the green cards though, because they can just field me off breeding pool really easy. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I get, Oh, the needles are really good though. Of course, needles are so good against them. I've been playing Smash and Blanche lately. We play two subtlety, one scolding. Like the bowmasters, oftentimes pretty telegraphed. The black green decks for sure use bowmaster kind of other bowmasters. So you're, so you're saying like we're bowmasters, not legal, which is a kind of like and it's kind of a weird paradox. But that, that's the main reason they play it. I don't maybe I feel like the cards also just kind of like modern staple, but. You you can you can make that argument. I agree. You get that that coffers is a deck that does that. I kind of like that uh, line of thinking.
Rumble Master C let's play if the ring was not legal. Well, I will say this, the ring is currently like all time low, uh, for play at C's. Esper scan. That's the, I mean, like, what, what, oh, as the, oh, the, yeah, this, yeah, you're right, you're right. Esper scan, the Persistent Archive deck does play Bow Master's Encounter. Yeah, maybe it happens more often, I think. Good thing to have, uh, f wait, four or five basics. Just four. Let me five for a second. I'm less excited now, I guess. It's really like all the cast, all the like force of negation decks is so tough to play the ring. Logic not good against Voidwalker too, kind of. Kind of funny to say that, but like they don't get to cast it off the Voidwalker. Probably a pretty good time to cast Preordain. I'm gonna go and get a Howl of Fountain now. So I don't mess with my shuffles. And I can still go play both of these. I wanna keep the spell pierce up, but then just be able to like salty this end of turn next turn maybe. These are both like about fine enough to keep. We'll keep the uh Salted in hand just in case we want to pitch. I really hope I don't have to, though. Would it be more correct to do something more powerful in those slots? I was talking about the, the Bowmaster thing. It's just like kind of like a weird, like, pseudo theoretical conversation, to be honest. I don't think it actually, like, something to read a ton into. But I'll say, Bowmasters is also, I, I don't think, su as good as it was, like, when it was first printed. Like, I, Bowmasters is not good against Rhinos. It's not, it's, it's a. Not very good against Titan. Like it's they, Titan is a ring deck, but it's like not a, it's it's like a ring deck that like doesn't care about bow masters very much. Like you just kind of like take four and then kill them. I think it's it's very good against Burke Tide. It's okay against Rakdos. Good against good against Rakdos. I think it's I think it's it's funny it's funny because it's like not good against Yogmoth, but Yogmoth also plays it. Um, yeah, bow masters is just not been feeling amazing. It's a good card though. Murphy, five months. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet boy, Risen Reef. So I've been kind of thinking about Risen Reef a little bit. Like I feel like if you just play like the re if you can figure out how to play a recommission reef deck, the haven't or like a way to recur reef, you don't really care that much about Bowmasters where it's like, are they preordaining? Thing. Yeah, but you don't care that much about Bowmasters because it's like, yes, they can like kill. You're st you, they have a, they have two one ones. You get a risen reef trigger. You both have two two for two. But you have like no card draw in your deck, and like your opponent has like two two one ones that you don't care that much about either. Obviously, Bowmaster lines up well against risen reef, but I don't think it like makes it, it completely invalidates it. Like it does some some things. Yeah, my opponent is floating twelve mana here. Oh. Oh no. Prison Reef Elementals of Scion. Probably not as good as Rhinos, but sounds fun. I guess I'm supposed to go Evoke Subtlety and then Solitude my Subtlety. So, I, I went down a bunch of cards, but this Emrakul turn is also just, I get to draw a card and nothing else happens. So I'm kind of too many spell pierces, of course. Why are we supposed to do that? Well, we, we do it so my opponent can't go... My, my opponent could go on my turn if I didn't do that. They could go, evoke, evoke solitude, evoke subtlety, counterspell, spell pierce. They can also get the rest of the cards out of my hand. 
Or they, yeah, they, they can just, or they can go counter spell, counter spell. They can get like literally every card out of my hand instead of just, just these. Um, I'm gonna name Karn over the ring because they usually play more rings, than, more cards than ring, when they can. If they play one, it's just very good. Put Saltude on top. I mean, is Saltude a particularly good draw here? Maybe it is. I, I didn't feel like it was. It would have annoyed my opponent had Voidwalker coming up, I guess. It would have been nice. Be a fun game to win. Cryptico would go a long way this, in this kind of game. Oh, there it is. Although we can't pass the code and keep the counter spell up. Let's get called. I'm going to get the code, though. Archer of Wretched Sora. Let's see if they remember to play around Spell Pierce. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, if you if you put if you put Solitude on top, it's nice because then they, they, yeah, you put yourself in a spot where they're not able to really do much with it. With our turn, Heart casting Solitude against Simmercole. Maybe I mean they get to gain a, a ton of life, like, but then we could have kept an extra Logic Knot. That that was that clinged to us was from their hand. I'm not playing around exactly two piercers. No, they're playing around. I don't know. They they know I have one pierce in their hand. Also, my opponent, the way they played game one, definitely not ghosting. A million percent not ghosting. Played like so hard into my tide binders. There's like no chance they're ghosting. I feel. But they definitely weren't last game. But at zero percent sus. And they also they they have they've also seen my hand. Uh, we need more needles. They have clean to dust in the yard. That's the reason to leave them four mana. They know I have spell pierce on my deck. That's the reason. Yeah, let's go to game three. Yeah, I could could have could have greedily got called but they they do play shielded Zedek, you know. The code seems so good against them. I guess Karn can be an issue. Maybe we should run an extra scolding because they also they boarded in Voidwalkers. Gross hand. That's on the mobile picks also, thankfully. Pick your Pope or Spell Pierce. I think I know Spell Pierce looked really bad that game, but siding out Spell Pierce against the Karn, the Great Creator, Damnation, One Ring, March of Russian Sorrow deck seems Seems super wrong. I know. I know there are games like that, but they can also sometimes pitch to subtlety. Still, it's. I think the upside is just too high. Yeah. Also. Also, you don't want to play play green cards against the deck with all the fields. That, that was also the problem, right? Very boarded out there, profane tutors. So pretty nice to know I'm not getting bowmastered in response to Teferi here. We got Shieldred's Edicted kind of badly last or on an earlier game, so I'm just gonna draw a card. If they bowmaster ping, it's not the end of the world. Plus it's a lot better against Voidwalker, I guess. Uh Force of is not good in, in your in your deck unless you have Violent Outburst. It's Force is like it's just does, lines up really poorly against the Cascade decks. Like it's not even good to force of negation like the Charlotte's. Okay, play down this well. It's not even good to force of negation like the Charlotte's Agent turn. I know it sounds kind of wild to say, but like if your if your opponent goes like Charlotte's Agent into like crashing footfalls and you force like you're down two cards and they have a two two. It's like just not that good of an exchange. I've been really really unhappy with force and like any any deck that's not like trying to like. A violent outburst. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start twitching like me? Well, it's kind of advice that can be tough to give because I don't know exactly what you need, what help you need, but 
I mean, just starting to do it is the is the hardest part. I wanted to stream for like years before I actually did start. What's the deal with Alice? Alice is an incredible removal spell that is underrated. But like, really, if you just start, like you'll start, you'll get the feel for like what you need to be doing, like what what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. Just you know, Shia LaBeouf it. Um, it feels not very risky. Yeah, I should just tie binder this because they can't fatal. They would have to have March. The second tide binder here. They plus or they minus the tide binder gets them. Pick your poison versus wear tear. I, I like pick your poison a lot at the moment because it can kill Scion. Scion's super popular. I think in the Miracles deck, I still want to play wear tear because you have so many. You have you have all these terminuses for Scion, and having a three mana value for counterbalance is really relevant against Rhinos also compared to one mana value, which you really don't want to have with pick your poison. I'm still playing around uh, the March there. I think we don't want to have to counterspell it. Um. Did they the just sky version? Uh, no, I bet we should have ephemerated there. I kind of ephemerate this field. I I, I haven't. No, I think that this build's better. Why take both the card? Play around uh, March of Richard Soros. I don't have to counterspell it. You could have attacked card with the tiebreaker that wasn't locking it down. I, it's just you can't just re you can't rely on the on the lockdown in, in this matchup. I think. Uh, I don't know. I've played some Mausoleum Secrets recently. I, I'm, like, pretty unhappy with that card. It just seems so sweet in, in theory and then in practice. Just down everything. Oh, well, I don't really need five mana or six mana that bad. I can graveyard that. My opponent has a removal spell. We've got kind of an interesting decision. I guess it's not that interesting. We just like can never afford to to fight over this. We got the code in the hand. Is logic not just fifth cast most of the time? Yeah, there's some small upsides, but one time we, we did lose our game earlier because we couldn't counter something. But I've been liking it. I mean, if we counter this, we're like pretty cold too. You four drop, of course. I think I think we gotta let it go. Does not feel great. It really feels like this is a bait spell, though. Kind of regret putting back the scolding, maybe. We foresee a turn exactly like this. We should have. They have one card in their hand. It was Sam Cat's Ruby working, working on. I mean, kind of. I I I've seen like a lot of Sam Roots builds that I like. I don't feel like I'd build it like that differently from like the way I've seen like Doomwake or Dak Faden. Oh wait. Go oh, ephemerate, we get to put Cauldron to play. I guess they don't kill it, but... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd build it like that differently from how I've seen them build it. Um, but I, 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 I would I want to play more Roots this week. Hopefully tomorrow. So much to get to, so much to do. It's an exciting time. What I like about using Logic Knot here is it doesn't give... They can't, like, Voidwalker Logic Knot, you know? I guess I'm gonna excel everything since they have cling to dust also. Like two small upsides over counter spell funny. Good empty asthma roots. Uh no, I'm I'm open to it though. So again, you yeah, just infinite ways you could build that deck. Okay, with solitude up, we'll just yeah, hold up hardcast solitude slash two counter spells. Good draw. Yeah, I confirm better. Hey on him. <laughs> Yeah, there's like a weird number of upsides Logic Dawn has over Counterspell, while also just like almost always, if you just play one copy, it counters the card. Roots and Pioneer with EDH Titans, with Titans then. You're probably too janky, but sounds incredibly fun. Um, Shields down. Out of basics. Okay, punished. 
Uh, they had one card left in their hand. I felt it was like okay. So I still feel like we're okay. Um, got a good amount of pressure against them here, of course. This seems like a bad call. Like, who cares about the Voidwalker? I, I could, like, legitimately lose the race to this Voidwalker. I feel like it was okay. I'm even, like, I'm also, like, doing... One thing here is, like, I'm doing really well against Karn and Shieldred. I'm bad against, like, exactly the ring. They have, like, two copies of that left in their deck. Nero, 11 months, they cook them back. In, like, a million turns. I don't I don't know, brother. It's... <laughs> You 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 can you can not counter in that spot. That's fine. I put also John, offers Karn, March Voidwalker, incredibly gnarly. I'm looking for an ephemerate to flip up this cauldron, I guess. Okay, um, I mean, I'd love to have one more mana, but uh, I'm definitely going to cast Tidebinder. They can Solitude my Tidebinder off the Voidwalker, but that wouldn't be the end of the world either. Obviously, we're hoping that their draw for turn isn't super relevant. Well, super punished. Be the most punished, yeah. The most punished ever. I feel like I still feel like the line was okay, so, so incredibly punished for it, of course. But my punish could just my opponent could have just drawn a march of rents and sorrow, and I would have been really, really boned, also. Pretty forced to counter this. Does seem like my opponent has another big thing, of course. Like, it, also, like, but even, even after the ring, like, every draw step has just been so good for my opponent, too. Like, it's in seven cards, they found two Karns, March, Thoughtseize, Voidwalker, Double Coffer. Let's see if I draw an Ephemerate. We'll see if they main face pop this, I guess. I guess they will, because they have. Well, they can hold it up. That was okay in theory. Opponent showed some sandbag intensity. This might have been too debating. Yeah, I, I, I know. I, I know the line didn't, it didn't fucking work out. It, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. One thing too was like it was you know it, it did it did feel like they're kind of baiting there. We were doing really good against the Karn, and they had they only had two rings left in the deck. It was another dynamic there. Although Cryptico may just may just take us home, huh? They got a nine. Back down to six. Or should, should we have bounce card response to the card? Uh, we can't because there's a card. Oh, it responds to the card. Maybe. <laughs> Wait, so do I get two turns? Hold on, do I get two turns? If I get two turns, they're dead. I think I win this game. Holy shit, hold on. Obviously they could have something. I think I get two turns. Why like why wouldn't I get two turns? That play after that turn, that player takes an extra turn. Them, you, them, you, I think. They bounce coat. They attacked! Oh, they attacked and bounce coat. Okay. They attacked. They attacked. <laughs> I, I just was surprised they didn't bounce the coat first. <laughs> okay. So let's see if we get two extra turns here.
pretty unf- if I didn't have that cauldra imprinted by the coat earlier, we would be feeling so hyped at the moment, assuming we actually get the extra turn. Now we need to draw like Teferi or something. Obviously, this just kills me. Oh, okay, I, I didn't get the extra turn. Really? Any any judge? Was that like? Was that like how it was supposed to work? Gather says you should have two. Can you can you link to that? Both triggers the same extra turn, but that's not how it works with time warp. If you cast two time warps on the same turn, you get two following turns. It's not really two turns. It's one extra turn. They control your first one. But isn't it? Because it's because it says then that player takes an extra turn in the same wording as time walk. Yeah, let's 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 look at this. Let's look at this gathering. Holy shit. Multiple player controlling effects affect the same player over each other. The last one to be created works. If multiple players have cast Emrakul and target the same player, each ability will create an extra turn. Multiple players, but not the same player. Okay, opponents on that one land preordain keep, it seems. Yeah, the, 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 this, says, this says I'm supposed to get two extra turns. It's weird. Time walks next, but not Emrakul. Yeah, I, I, I put a fast game one here, huh? If we get some blue white preordain deck, maybe like the mirror, maybe blue white. Let's get these out of here. Side binders, spell, pierce, second subtlety, minus one. Yeah. Opponent's turn, your turn, they control you, your turn, they control you. Yeah, people who keep describing how Imrakul the Promised End triggers works, I'm so, how many times do I have to say, I know how an Imrakul the Promised End resolves. I've, I've played a lot with it, i played a lot against it, I know how that resolves. What I'm confused about is why Imrakul says that player takes an extra turn after this, and there was two, they cast two of the, they cast two Imrakuls on the same turn. Time walk, extra turn, stack. Why does that extra turn given to me from Emrakul not stack? That's that's what that's that's what I'm asking. I'm not asking to just explain how Emrakul triggers result. Yeah, maybe it's a bug. Maybe it's how it's supposed to work. Very interesting interaction. They both say your next turn. So both triggers in your yeah. But th- that's also that's that's also how time warp is worded. Time walk is worded. Take an extra turn after this one, right? So usually the creation of an extra turn just stacks. Multiple effects on the same player override each other. Okay, yeah, and, and like it, it obviously it could work this way. It could work this way. After that, that player takes an extra turn, even with double Emmy. That statement only references the turn they controlled you, which happens once. Yeah, but the, the, again, but isn't time warp worded the same way? After this turn, take an extra one. It's okay. It's it's I, it's it didn't work here. We we lost the game, but. The extra turn is charged to the control effects. Since both triggers controlled your next turn, only one happened. The extra turn occurred theoretically, right? Yeah, it's, it seems very, it seems very close. What's the difference? Our, our mana curve is lower. We have Alice and Spell Pierce in the main deck. We're like uh, down to Tidebinder. We have Pick Your Poison in the sideboard. Uh, no, no Lord reveals more, one more surveil land, which has been good. The extra turn you take only affects after your control turn. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. The, like that, that effect is tied to the control turn. Do we have any? Do we have any real judges in the chat, though? I guess we'll keep on the draw. I'll splash you pick your points. So I felt it felt pretty reasonable. Like you already want to play an off color shock land in the deck anyways for prismatic ending. So playing like the pick your poisons is pretty free. Time wars were the way of reference to general turn, not specific turn. Which you were control. Okay, I, th- I think I think that makes sense. We played the mirror here. Replacement effect. Yeah, that makes more sense to me too. Super super duper cool interaction. Not it's not like every day we get to like like <laughs> get this deep into the rules. But like you know, there's a salvation post that says like you should get the extra two extra turns. You know. Says you control them during one turn and they get two additional turns. Okay, le- level two just saying two additional turns. Feel like, feel like it's a modal bug, and we probably would have lost anyways because we didn't have the extra. We didn't have we didn't have like get two attacks, but
or three three in the play. It looks like I'm playing the mirror, which is super. Cool. Figured out. <laughs> I we'll cut that as a one. <laughs> uh, I, I, yeah, we we could have drawn to fairy maybe to win. We were not zero percent. Not likely. Uh, yeah, they put the type binder on the bottom. And they missed their land drop. All right, good in the mirror. Let's get a 4-1 prediction going. 4-1 asterisk, because we definitely lost a for sure bug. <laughs> Should have had the extra turn. We could have top decked Teferi to have a chance to win. Um, I think like no other card really gives us a chance because we don't have Cauldron in our deck anymore. I think I might put back Tidebinder with the intention to maybe... Hold up Counterspell turn two and then play Stoneforge with Ephemerate up on turn three. Yeah, it's okay. I, again, I <laughs> if you if you if you explained how the Emrakul trigger resolves, I'm just, just having a laugh. But <laughs> I just it's very funny. But again, please, please, please continue to have the instinct to explain things to me in very simple terms. <laughs> Actively encouraged. How do we go from 2 and a 3 1 for a minute? We played the mirror, and my opponent uh, stumbled really hard both games. So, bad voting for the blue white deck. Good voting for us. Uh, Servial, 12 months. Welcome back. Happy anniversary. I think it was a good deck with Thopter Foundry, Urza's new equipment. Um, coat, coat does seem like it's likely good with Urza. The ability to, like, bounce coat, replay it, tap it for mana. Is interesting to me. The ability to cloak an Urza, flip it over, is interesting. It it also feels like a bad just again, just like every time ever. It's just it's just never a good time to be an Urza deck. There's so many force of vigors always. Okay, so I'm gonna go for, against Yogmoth. I think I should go for Stoneforge this turn. I'm going to grab Cryptic Coat. This way I can play around my opponent going Grist minus on Stoneforge Mystic. Um, but I could also potentially activate Stoneforge Mystic and Ephemerate it to put Cauldra into play if they go Grist plus. They have a Bowmaster, so let's not walk into it. If I do 10 Sing card damage, you can also get mod. You can redeem, redeem Sing card 10 times, and I'll make you a mod, but I won't also Sing. <laughs> Like going to a store and <laughs> I don't know, getting double the product for the same. Exactly. Like um, throwing Cauldra at Yogmoth is oftentimes a really good play. If my opponent just plays Yogmoth next turn, they can shrink it down to two, which it wouldn't even be that bad. Oh no, where's the Cauldra? But some people in the chat haven't seen this trick. Wait, Cauldra's the god of Phyrexia? They told me. Probably shouldn't have attacked with the, the or army if we have Court of Calling, right? One, two, three. You could put a Grist into play here. Okay. Um. I guess I'm just gonna get the second coat into in my hands, but not. But it'll be kind of slow to get this online, which kind of sucks. I feel like this is worth doing. I'm probably going to have to use a counterspell this turn. 
Good play on the Haywire Might. I get a little bit surprised, I guess, to see main deck, uh... Banner's good draw, also. A little surprised to see main deck, um... Right at the moment, but... Okay. Maybe it's better with, like, Leyline Scion being a thing. I just kind of feel like, uh... So main zoo is falling off a little bit. I haven't played against that much lately. Code seems low-impact and slow. Um... You definitely have that opinion. It's very hard to interact with, and it's like, it's it's like a slow grindy card that's hard to interact with. So I think that these kind of cards can afford to be, you know, lower impact and slow. But it's 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 it it's unblockable. You get to put like a lot of copies of it into play. Pressures your life total relatively quickly, but it it can all, it can be behind bad when you're behind, of course. I think it's an incredible Stoneforge Mystic to target. You have to remember, like, we didn't draw these, you know what I mean? <laughs> these were these were tutored to hand. I'm supposed to call, like, Teferi low impact, and like, maybe, maybe it, that card's high impact. Um, yeah, let's definitely just hold up Stoneforge activation plus, uh, Iron Spell. I found Code to be good against Jogmoth, though. The unblockable is really, really nice. They have another Court of Calling. I'm just going to Logic Knot for a bunch since I don't have anything else to do with it. The mana that is. Okay, Prismatic X4. Uh, sometimes they play Urborg and Yavamai. I guess we're going to have Urborg now that we have our breeding pool over Steam Vents. Maybe pending the orc army. Think about master stuff here. I thought about preordaining and then pending. Yeah. Need them to be kind of out of ammo. Can't really beat you know three cords and a yog or anything or this. Yeah. Yeah, I usually sign up to Fairy. Big Cyber Planets matchup. We played against. We beat Yogg earlier today, right? Usually cut the Teferis and the Spell Pierces, and then. I bring in Double Scolding, Tide Binder, Subtlety, Subtlety, Sort of Feast and Famine, Needle, Needle. And I chew a little. And I usually minus two Preordains also, but I kind of chew a little bit after that. Or cast for two blockers there. Maybe, maybe could have. Uh, there was a prediction, yeah. Pretty happy with the sideboard plan we have for this matchup. Okay, on the play. So Rail Lands are just so good in these kind of things too. House is also very good in, in this matchup. Good against Mana Dwarfs, good against Stonewall, Dogmoth. Nice for one mana card to answer three mana card. I just need lands. I, I I do like Stoneforge Mystic at this spot. Yeah, well. We've got one. Um, I actually think with Subtlety in my hand, I play it. It's a little weird to, like, bin it, and then the deck's like, no, you need this Stoneforge Mystic, but... I don't know. Also, if they Gris, like, do I... Yeah, I, 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 I could have got Cauldron to be better around, like, Grist, although I think I'll just Subtlety Grist. Two pitch Tidebinder. If we could draw a white source next turn, it'd be uh, untapped white source. It'd be so good. We go like oust into to coat or which one? Did you put it on top? Don't draw that white source. Let's 
Let's put an equipment into play. The Feast and Famine can start chomping on them pretty good. I think that's what we should be going for. We draw a land, we get to go equip Feast and Famine, get rid of the Halfling, uh, cast the Coat. Interesting decision point. If they have Force of Vigor, you know, we'll lose this game again. Sometimes they got it all. Also could nice. Especially if we draw land. I think we can keep this. Kind of close. We'll lose the Force of Vigor super hard. I'm surprised they sacked the halfling there, but so the next turn we get to go like coat into oust counterspell up probably. Always save the oust. Ignore the Grist for this turn, ending the Young Wolf. Give them that to one card in hand. I think Fury had to go if I got for shit by price to screw with the Fury ban. I mean, I think it would have been better if they had banned Grief instead. Uh, I'm glad to not have Scam top deck anymore i feel like the fury ban was a little bit better than people give it credit for i think a lot of players are annoyed that scam is still a deck after the ban but it isn't like it's like not a top five modern deck anymore in my opinion and it is um it's a close it's like it's you know like five or six i guess but um Another thing too is like the surveil lands and like tidebinder have like really significantly buffed cascade strategies. That's kind of always how it is. Like you ban one thing and then immediately something else takes a pl takes its place. They're drawing the high arc next turn. What's this Oda? I think they thought I was attacking them with the Feast of Famine. I was, I was going to kill the Grist. I don't know. I don't feel like maybe they just conceded a little early. I'm not sure. Can you explain why Surveil Land's good? I can't see it. They're fetchable. You can fetch them with fetch lands, uh, and you get to, and you get some card selection off of your fetch lands. So, like, here we have ten fetch lands in our deck. All of these cards are more powerful because we're playing the Surveil Land. They've been they've been so it's been so nice to have that selection in the mid to late game that I think you even want to play like up to three. I play I had six we five owed with six in our miracles deck yesterday, but that deck's a bit different, needing that like top of library uh, interaction. I think five was the right number in that deck. Okay, keep this on the draw against Yogg. That's on a, a mold of six. Yeah, if you ephemerate a face down card, it comes back in with the ETB. We got to ephemerate assaulted earlier. Let's let's set up to assault to ephemerate. I think. Heard some some rumbling in the background. Esther's dad's over installing a new lock on the on her car. It's been broken for like six months. <laughs> Uh, land here. See Rin's six last few days of fall off. Yeah, Rin's kind of like an all time low. None of the top decks are playing it. Creativity is like a good deck that's underplayed at the moment, though. Like it's it's been putting up good results, and 
people still aren't really playing it that much. Mr. Vale. Hey, look, look, whoever asked, look, I got to keep a land when I need it, got to graveyard a land when I don't need it, it's off. I'm gonna go for this here, I think I want to be able to slam the, the Cryptic Coat. I'm gonna miss their land drops, so getting rid of Wall of Roots seems pretty nice. Be really ahead on board, the counter spell is always good. Another Surveil land. Get. We had a Stoneforge Mystic, which is relevant. We could maybe go no attack with the coat and then be able to bounce and replay coat. Although they have the, they have the Haywire Might here. So nice still two for one. Could just could draw call draw another coat at, at some point. Just keep the two two for now. Um Needle Agatha's Soul Cauldron here. Do that too. Yeah, you can flip it up at any time. So if we draw a cauldron, you can flip it up and then activate it immediately because it's not like it has summoning sickness either. Uh, Rex Sage. Let's see what let's see what I'm drawing. That'll inform me if I want to counter this or not. Like I likely want to, but sure. Fire surveillance, good. There you go. Let's counter the two for one. Get the pressure going. Gets a point who's stumbling. Like they like even if they go land yog, it's not so bad, and we have we have a lot of good top decks, and I think I want to keep the pressure up. Cause like if I could just hit them like for five one more time, like that's gonna be so relevant. Although the three life of this may come come up. Blue Marsh probably the worst land they could draw. They do have a grist though, so if I'm going to kill the grist, I'll have to oust the token. They have two cards in their hand. The subtlety up. Let's let's just let's just get a clear board. Yeah, no, we started with I think we started with one surveil land and then we're up to three. It's it's I think three is three is like I feel pretty confidently is the right number after like a lot of reps, but children young here. Could obviously end up determining. I don't I don't think you go for it, I don't think you want to. I think three is a good number. Low card is Stoneforge Mystic. Oh, we did look. That's the, the the attack menu has been bugged for, or like the what it says, has been bugged for a long time. I'm kind of surprised my opponent's thinking about this so much. I guess it's good to think. Huh? The attack for eight down to five. Oh yeah, I guess they're just dead. <laughs> I have dried arbor though. If they have arbor, like what are they even drawing to? Like there's almost nothing better than shield Right behind. They put it on top. And pending a shield red. Good on the 28, tuck with everything, the eat the solitude, chump lock the cloak, down to four, down to one, up to three. Little T up. It should still have dried arbor in against me post board, I would think. Good draw, though. One blue red surveillance to get pending four drops. Maybe. Good again with a cloak here, of course. For everything. I know we lose the solitude, but we get them down to three, dead to a subtlety, get them this dead. Is ephemerating two cloaks to keep for modern? I mean, we have, ephem we have ephemerate in this deck, you know. Hard to imagine I'm not subtleting any three drop here, but this also this also is just a concession, I think. Did you think over the raid? Hope you're doing well today. We just four one to a blue white coat blade league. We also um the game the match we lost was very weird. We're probably losing anyways, not a hundred percent to coffers where. Um, we, I, I, I believe everything we have level two, level two judge confirm. We had some like articles posted where we were supposed to get two extra turns after the control turn. My opponent cast two Emrakuls. I counted one of them. We only got one extra turn after the control turn. I, I believe 
how the rules are supposed to work. We're supposed to get two, but known bug. Yeah, blue white gamer aspiring spike. Um, so we're gonna pivot to another blue deck, but a deck that does not usually play blue. Um. Thank <laughs> you. 